So number 12 then from paper one of the 2021 Higher Maths Resource Paper. Now this is where it splits into a part A or a part B, depending on which topics were covered because of restrictions. So part A is the one with the vectors and the recurrence relations. So here, four marks for this little vectors question. Very few marks here, especially this last part. Only one mark for determining this coordinate, which is fairly straightforward, but there's, there's all sorts of ways of doing that though. Still, anyway, it tells you, you've got these two points here that are given, but there's a third point C, which you're not given. That's what you have to find eventually in part B. You just told the length of the vector BC. Or maybe I'll just call it the displacement VC when we're talking about vectors that only move from point to point. You should really just call them displacements and any vectors equation would be a displacement equation. There, there are vectors, of course. But what does it say? There's another bit of information. B divides AC. So it's meaning presumably properly dividing it. In other words, you've got point A, somewhere further along you've got point C, and somewhere in between you've got point B. Because you have to watch that dividing, because strictly speaking there's two sorts of possible dividings. So you could have a dividing internally or a division externally. Let's see the point C. You could say C divides AB externally. In other words, to go from A to B, you'd have to go forward to C and then come back to get to B. But anyway, that's what it's saying. I'm just assuming it means B divides it internally. And what's the first bit? Find the magnitude of the displacement AB, of the vector AB, the displacement AB. Right, well, AB. How do you go from A to B? Well, that'll be B minus A. Where you end up, take away where you started. 7, negative 4, 1, writing them down as column vectors. And A is 4, 2, negative 5. Which means AB is going to be 7, take away 4 is 3. That'll be negative 6, and that's plus the 5, which makes that 6. So the magnitude of that then, the magnitude of that vector, or you could say the magnitude of that displacement, the size of the move, the actual move that goes, uh, would have to go through to get from A to B, will be just doing three-dimensional Pythagoras, the along, the back, and the up. So it'll be the three squared. You could take the factor of three out, and then just have one, negative two, and two getting squared, plus the negative six squared, plus the 6 squared. So, add that lot up. What have you got? You've got the 9 and the 36 and the 36. So that's 72, 81, which means the magnitude of AB is 9. It's 9 units to go from A to B. So we'll just put it in. 9 units to go from A to B, and it said here it's 6 units to go from B to C. So the two marks here were, one, for getting the components of that translation, and two, for carrying out that three-dimensional Pythagoras, the distance formula, to get the magnitude. Now the second part just said, state the ratio in which B divides AC. Well, the ratio in which it divides it, so I should write down AB to BC. Maybe I'll put it down now. So AB to BC is going to be, well, it's 9 to 6. I'll put that down first of all. But you have to simplify that, so that'll be 3 to 2. So that was part A. Now, part B just says, so what's the coordinates of C? Now, this, this could be huge. I don't know much to put down here because the best way to do it is just to use a displacement equation. I think that's what's sort of comically referred to in the higher as stepping out. I'm just stepping out for a moment. How do you get from A to C? Sorry, how do you get to the point C? Well, to get to somewhere you don't know, you start from somewhere you do know, so you can choose either A or B. And then you follow a move that you know. Well, you know, since they're on a straight line, these vectors go in the same direction. And one's just a fraction of the other one. 
So how could you get to C? You could start at A or B, I'll just start at B, and then go from B to C. That's called the displacement equation. How can you get to C? Go to B and then follow the move that takes you from B to C. Now the move from B to C, we don't have that, but we've got the move from A to B. And since they go in the same direction, that'll just be a certain fraction of it, and that's what that ratio gives you. That move BC is the same as the move AB, it's just not as long. So that's actually equal to B plus a fraction of AB. This fraction, two thirds. And I know both of those parts. Now that's the simple way to do it. That's the way that's sort of normally referred to as sort of stepping out. So I'll put it down. So B, how do I get to B? Well, B was 7, negative 4, 1. How do I get from A to B? 3, negative 6, 6. Which means how do you get from B to C? Well, it'll just be two thirds of that. Run out of space a bit. So I'll just tidy that up now. So that means your final answer is going to be you know, 7 plus 2 thirds of that's 2 will be a 9. 2 thirds of that is a negative 4, so that's a negative 8. And 2 thirds of that is a 4, so that's a 5. That's the position vector of C, which means C is the point 9, negative 8, 5. The alternative would be to use the section formula. Now, I know there's another way that I've seen getting done in the higher, where you, you state this, you, you form an equation with the two displacements and the ratio, and then you start playing around with them and split them apart. But all that happens if you do that is you end up with either this one almost immediately, or the section formula after about half a dozen lines. There really are only two methods. There's the displacement equation, which is the best one, because you can understand that really easily. How do I get there? Start somewhere I know and follow a known pathway. Or there's the section formula, and the section formula works like this. Let me put it down with B first of all. If you want to find some point that cuts a line into a certain ratio, and I'm just gonna call the ratio M to N here, then it will be 1 over m plus n, because that's the number of bits that are all together, times, and then you have to watch these get reversed, it'll be the n times the a plus the m times the c. Now you could put in those figures and then rearrange it for the c, but you can also do c, which is an external division. You would say c would be, now to get to c, since the ratio is 3 to 2, 3 to 2 means you're going 5 steps forward, 2 steps back. So if you add them together, that's going to be a third. And it's the second one, so it's of negative 2a plus 5b. That would be the section formula that would end up with this result. Now you could, well, I'm not going to go through it. You could work that out if you like, but you'll just end up with this answer.